Hi, thanks for watching Dr. Linda Kramer. Today I want to talk about marriages. Um, you know, we live in a society now where there's over 7 billion people on the planet. So it's very easy to find age appropriate, sex appropriate, um, other people in society who we want to get married to. If you look back in history, you know, you'd be lucky if there's 200 people in the whole community where it was you just marry the closest person without considering anything about their personality characteristics etc so we now live in a world now where we do get that option to have options easy yeah okay so when we're looking at someone who to have a relationship with you know i've got a 14 year old she's nearly 15 year old my daughter and i say to her all the time you don't just be friends with whoever's in your class. You pick the one with the same characteristics, the same attributes, the same hobbies, the same interests. And it's through those joint associations that we become closer to them so we have more in common. Rather than like in medieval times when it was just, oh yeah, she's the same age as me, I'll marry her. Okay, like I was just saying. So what happens now is... We can actually pick a partner who's got similar interests, similar hobbies, similar spiritual relationships to God or heaven or the universe, whether you're spiritual or religious. So there are more options out there. But what happens is we still have all our underlying behavioralisms that can be negative. Narcissistic behaviors like control, blaming, grudges, issues and other things so when we get married you should <laughs> realistically resolve all those past emotional personal issues as grudges etc that we have so when you go into this marriage with another person you're open transparent and you're moving forward in stay instead of staying in the past <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, it's freezing here this morning in Brisbane. Um, so when we get married, we look forward. It's actually a looking forward into the future of what we can create with that other person. Marriages should always be equal. There's no person who's more dominant than the other. And there's no one who's subservient or, would I say, a slave to that relationship. Unless it's something that you both agree on, okay? If you go to like the Fifty Shades of Grey movies, okay? So what happens is generally people come into a relationship and they get married and they haven't set those boundaries of what's going to be the rules of play in that relationship. You know, I like talking about Sheldon Cooper off the Big Bang Theory, that TV show. He always has the roommate agreements. So everybody has that knowledge of what they can and can't do while they're in that relationship. So how often do we do that in real life? Hardly ever. So what happens is you get married to someone and the big thing here is now with society, both the partners generally have to work. So you only see this person for maybe two or three hours a day if you're lucky. You know, they go to work for, say, eight or ten hours a day. So you're not really seeing who that person is and what they believe in, etc. Because they're at work all day, they come home tired. <clears throat> so that can also be a way that the marriage breaks down, where there's no communication, there's no trust formed on sharing information with each other. Generally, most marriages, they start having children straight away. So now you're not just working on the relationship with your partner, you're nurturing and growing a new person as well in that relationship. So it can be very hard in these days of where we are, are now at to actually sit there and work out who is this person that I'm married to. I've got a couple of examples here of what's happened and one of them is my personal experience because I'm transparent with what I've been through <clears throat> that a lady came to my house a few years ago 
she was a super stunning woman. Waist was only like 23 inches around her waist. Beautiful clothes, hair was immaculate. She came in bawling her eyes out and she said, I want to know if my husband's coming back to me. So I said to her, what's the situation? She said, my husband left me 18 months ago. He won't grant me a divorce, but he's now moved in with this other woman and they're expecting a child together. Is he coming back to me? So I said to her, no way, he's gone. He's not coming back. He's made this um, relationship with this new woman. And she said, well, I don't understand why he won't grant me a divorce. So I hope that you've listened to that story because my personal experience is that I married my first husband. We separated and got a divorce. Then I married the man who I went to America to be with and he wouldn't grant me a divorce for 10 years. We married in 2001, in 2000 I should say. I died in 2001 and I had my near-death experience. And I returned back to Australia later that year in 2001. But he didn't grant me a divorce until 2011. So by 2003, 2004, I'd met my daughter's father and I couldn't legally marry him because I was still legally married to my American husband. So I've got another example. A man has just emailed me and he said, my wife left six years ago. We broke up. She won't grant me a divorce. I want her back, basically. I hope that I've interpreted his email correctly. So what happens is when we're in a relationship that turns into a marriage, we've got to remember the fundamentals of marriages. Marriages should be equal. They're transparent. We're open. We're intimate, not just physically, but we're intimate with our thoughts and what we want to learn and what we want to get rid of out of our lives. We share those deep and meaningful um, messages with our partner because you're intertwined through that marriage certificate where you're one person. <clears throat> now, when I say one person, every person has the right to do what they like. We are not connected to the hip of our partner. No way at all. So we allow that person to grow with our encouragement and nurturing characteristics. And they also nurture and encourage us to be the best that we can be as well. So when marriage manipulation occurs, this is when one person in the relationship wants things their way so it's control, but they don't allow the other person to know the story. So there's no transparency. <clears throat> so the lady who came to my house a couple of years ago, my advice, because it's always free advice, take it as much as you want or leave it at the door and just say, no, nah, Linda's full of it, because I don't mind if people say that about me. But I said to her, stop being around him you know having him connected to you release him forgive him for what he's done and move on with your own life because the most important person is always me point to yourself and say me me i am the most important person so when manipulation of a marriage occurs it's the other person trying to control us and manipulate us to do what they want. So in the example of this woman, she's actually the flip side of that. Her husband's moved on with another woman and now they're having a baby. Well, they would have had the baby by now. <clears throat> but she is trying to control him by bringing him back. This other email that I just received, he's trying to control the fact that she should come back to him. And that will never work. It'll never work. Because unless it's mutual agreements, it will never work. 
okay? Never work. So when I had manipulation from my ex-husband, the American, he didn't grant me a divorce until 2011, 10 years after our marriage. Was I going to hang around and just say, oh, well, I'll let him decide if he wants me back? No way, because we never allow someone else to take our own personal authorization. And that's a big word here, personal authorization. I'm authorizing another person to tell me what I do. Is that right? Never. It's never right for someone else to dictate to us how we should live or what we do in our existence. Okay? So we've got to empower ourselves by saying, I am going to do what I feel is right. And I am going to look after me first. We stand in that boundary of a rule. So when we do interact with other people and they say, oh, how about we do this? If you don't want to do this, tell them no. It's not being confronting, but it's setting that boundary of what you want to do. Okay? So let's just go back there to my ex-husband. You know, the guy I died, 2001. He, I left America in 2001, in September, I came back to Australia. He wouldn't get, grant me a divorce for another nine years. Nine years. He didn't want me to have another relationship until he decided when I should be free again. Is that fair? I hope you're saying no, okay? So I stood in my self-authorization. <clears throat> I said to myself, because I didn't need to say it to him, I said to myself, Linda, do you like the fact that this guy is trying to control you? My answer was no. So then I said to myself, what am I going to do about it? And I said, I'm going to change my name through deed poll, which is now change of name here in Australia. Cost about 50 bucks. But I rang them and I changed my name. So then I could be with Tashi's daughter living under his surname. And that's why I'm now Kramer and not Davis. Because when I was living in America, all my hospital records were in Davis. Okay. Well, that's another part of his manipulation because he actually put me down as my first husband's name, which was Armistead. Nice man doing that when we'd been married for a year, still calling me my ex-husband's name. See the manipulation? So he was going over that boundary, okay? So when we have a relationship, guys, any relationship, we have a relationship with anything, if I look after you and I put new batteries in, you're, you're agreeing that you're going to work for me to use my computer, my, my computer, yeah? That's my computer mouse. So I have a relationship. My pen, if you have ink in you, I'll look after you and you'll work for me. So we have a relationship so I can write. My cat has a relationship with me because I feed it. Well, it's not my cat, it's a stray. But I feed her, I give her water, I look after her mental um, medically when she's injured etc right now she's curled up on my sleeper bed she's asleep great so her and I have a relationship <clears throat> so you set these rules with everyone that you interact with and everything okay if they don't agree with it I always say get rid of it pending obviously if it's something that you can tolerate or not if my pen, I've agreed to use you if you're full of ink. If this pen runs out of ink, guess what I do? I toss it away and buy a new one. Because it's not doing the rules of why that thing is in my life. 
So it's learning how to set boundaries. It's learning how to set those rules of what you do and allow, do allow and what you don't allow in the relationship. Like my pen, I have a relationship with my pen. So we look at any relationship, family, friends, neighbours, co-workers, the people we walk past at the shops. We have a relationship with everybody. I have a rule that if I walk past you, I don't want to talk to you because you're a stranger. They agree to it because they don't talk back. So we respect in each other. So relationships are based on mutual respect. Okay? What a doozy of a video first thing in the morning for Linda. Okay? If I respect this pen, it'll work for me. See how it works? So manipulation in a marriage. You agree that you're going to be together. But if one person decides that's not going to be how it goes, like that lady, her husband moved out and now he was with somebody else. He's actually controlling her. So she's actually his plan B. If his new relationship with the lady having his baby doesn't work out, he's still married to the first woman so he can just run back to her. And she'll accept him blindly because she's still married to him and wants it to work out. But ultimately, she's deteriorating her own self-worth, her own self-value, appreciation, respect, and most of all, her own self-love. Because what she's actually doing is she's saying to him, making a very clear image, I will accept you even if I am your plan B. We're never anybody else's plan B, okay? Do not ever allow somebody to make you the plan B, okay? Let's go there with the situation. You're coming up to the weekend, it's coming up to Saturday night and you think, what will I do? And someone rings you and says, <clears throat> hey, do you want to come over? You think, oh gosh, I don't really like this person. Okay, I'll say yes at this point, but if something else comes up better, I'll go to that instead. They're your plan B, Okay. That thing that you were going to do with that first person who contacted you, you made them plan B. Never make somebody plan B. So if you do accept to go to like somewhere on a Saturday night, you stay true to that and you make them feel that important, that special, that appreciation. Then you don't cancel it and say, oh, sorry, I've got something else on that's better. Even though we wouldn't say, we wouldn't sell them at something better. But you never make somebody a plan B because that's then allowing you, because it all reflects back onto us, how we treat others, others will treat us the same. So if you're a plan B to somebody, guess what? You'll start, be, they'll be a plan B to you as well. It works both ways, perspective. <clears throat> so manipulation in a marriage should never be about plan B's. You never make someone feel that they are not important enough for your time. So that lady that came to me a few years ago, I actually said to her, he's got you as the backup. He's your, your, her, his plan B. If it fails with this new relationship, he can always come back to you. Do you want to be plan B? Do you want to be second to her? She said no. So I gave her tools and um, skills on how to make herself more self-resilient, -re -re self-responsible, self-authorization, self-respect, self-appreciation, and most of all, self-love. Because if we don't love ourselves first, no one else can ever love us. Okay? So, guys, I hope that this video today has helped you. I do have a book, it's called Heal to Success, and it's on my website, www.lindarae.info, L-Y-N-D-E-R-A-E.info. If you want a copy of that, you'll teach yourself how to get self-appreciation, self-respect. So you never become someone else's plan B. And the worst part is when we use it in a marriage where we're their part B. 
I'm never going to be part B to anybody. Second choice. Okay? I will never be someone else's second choice. So that's just me saying that. And that's what I'd like you to say today as well about yourself. Okay? So um, how did I resolve it with my first husband? I stood up for myself and I said to him, get stuffed. I don't care when you grant me a divorce because it doesn't matter to me. Me is number one. Me is all I care about. Me is my most important attribute. Have a good day, guys, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.